This is Dorian from Broadside, and you're listening to Rhino Radio. So I'm here with Dorian. Dory? Yeah, Dorian. Dorian, okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird one. <laughs> you don't like Dory? I get called that from time to time, but, uh... It's usually, like, every now and again a fan will make art, uh, like, uh, sometimes I'll get, like, these fan arts of, uh, the, the fish Dory from the movie, and my face is just, like, crudely photoshopped onto it. It's pretty funny. Huh? I thought it was gonna come, yeah. yeah. So, I'm with Dorian of Broadside, second time in the UK. Yeah. It's yeah. the last day of the tour. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm not gonna ask how tour's going, but you guys have mentioned that the UK has been showing you a lot of love. Oh yeah. So has it gone bigger since the the first time? It definitely has. We've noticed, you know, like reactions have gotten bigger. You know, like people recognize us a little bit more than last time, and uh, and, it, and it's pretty cool, especially you know being in a foreign land and you know we're we don't know what to expect when we go to places that aren't you know our own you know our home base. So going out to the UK and like and always that was always like you know a far away goal like all oh, those people are like so like intelligent and cultured and you know refined and 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 having people within this residence kind of you know under like like us and know us a little bit and we're just like holy shit you know it's kind of it's a weird honor that we, you know so, but yeah so now it's your second time here do you still think that the locals are more refined and sophisticated well, okay, so now that I've experienced it, there's a lot of similarities. Yeah. There's a lot of, there, there is a lot of, uh, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of refined uh, characteristics that, that come, but that I've noticed uh, some not so refined, but they're just as lovely to be around. So. Okay. And All the good. first time you mentioned that you were acting like tourists, so what oh, yeah. you experience more this time? Um, I mean, this time... We, uh, I mean, we still work kind of tours, but, like, we, we kind of just, instead of, like, hitting all the main popular stuff in every city, um, like, the number one popular thing in every city, we were just like, we'll just go walk around, you know, take a lab, walk a couple blocks this way, walk a couple blocks that way, find something that looks cool, and, and just go in, poke around, see what's up, you know, we just did, we kind of explored a little bit on our own without, like, without, you know, Looking things up on Google, on what to do. When so less Harry Potter stuff. Ye yes. Still however, careful. however, we are always welcome to do Harry Potter stuff, and we actually really wanted to go to the Wizarding World while we were in London. We just we didn't have time and stuff. It just didn't work out. But okay. So even though we've just met a few minutes ago, I feel like there's something going on here. So I'm gonna go a bit personal. Okay. Cool. Okay. So I know that you guys were a bit addicted to Pokemon Go last summer. Is it still Ooh. going on? Okay. Alright, so, okay, here's the deal. So, on Warped, uh, that's when Pokemon Go exploded. Um, uh, everybody was playing it. Everybody on the tour was playing it. Anybody who was anybody was playing it. Everybody. Um, we, the, all of us, got very heavily involved in it. Um, however, like most normal people, uh, after like two months of doing it, we were like, eh. Except... For Niles and Pat, who are uh, the guitarists and uh, the and our bass player, uh, they both still play it to this day, still. and they'll still we'll be like sitting at a coffee shop, and I'll see Pat like lean over Niles and be like, check that out, <laughs> check it out. That's like a couple blocks away. So. And I'm just like, what the? But yeah, they're still avid fans of it and they're avid users. So what's your main addiction right now? Um, game. Okay, I have a couple. Anything, what kind of motivates you more than it should? What motivates me? I love the show Narcos. Okay. That show is so sick. I can't stop watching it. I love Rick and Morty. I can't stop watching that. Um, I have this dumb game that no one knows about on my phone called Balls, B-A-L-L-Z. And and I'm, I have a, like a high score that's just not even, it's like, it's so bad how high the score is and I'm still going on it. And every day I play it, I'm just like, I'm wasting so much of my life staring at the screen and getting a high score that means nothing, but in a weird way it motivates me <laughs> to like, go do real shit and go look at human faces and be like, stop looking at your phone and stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna ask, 
what's the main thing that you could not find in the US but you love finding in the UK? Um, Whether it's food or the lovely fashion weather. here fashion. is so not like as a whole people in the UK dress so much nicer like y'all's sneakers sorry trainers are the you guys have the best trainers they're so nice and they're like everywhere and everyone dresses all like fit and like tight clothes and, and it's just nice but uh, in any given moment you can walk into a Walmart in the US and you'll see some <laughs> less than inappropriate outfits let's just leave it at that and you know, and you're just like, wow, that exists. That's wow. I thought that was just memes on the internet, and it really isn't. Those things exist, and that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. But what's but one thing? Something. What's one thing here that you miss terribly because you can only get it home? Um. Ooh, Wawa. Okay. There's a, there's a yeah. There's a gas station. It's it's a gas station for like first and foremost, like for the most part, and small portion on the east coast where I live and uh, it's just a gas station and they serve subs and their subs are for whatever reason are so good like the bread's so good the pickles are amazing <laughs> lunch meat is amazing you know a Chipotle guy? I love Chipotle, Chipotle is awesome so you found the equivalent in the UK? um not yet curry? no well no we ate somewhere today w uh, wag why, why, yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, we ate that today. That was really good. Uh -huh. That was awesome. I would say that's the closest thing to equivalent, even though I know one's Mexican and one's more uh, Thai. But, yes, very good. Okay. okay. To find the balance between your, the band's sense of humor and also dealing with some intense stuff, do you guys ever get too far? Like, did you get a too soon uh, comments about you guys joking about stuff that some people might not joke? Um. I mean, not that. Not, I mean, I I would say within reason. You know, we we have our fair share of jokes and, and our fair share of inappropriate jokes, just like most people. But I would say that in a lot of ways, like with like, only tastefully, because you know we don't do, we I don't we don't take jokes to you know so far to the expense of others. But we we that's the number one reason we overcome a lot of our issues is we'll just make jokes about it. Like if one of, one, of the, uh, one of us is like super bummed or feeling lonely and, or whatever, we'll make like the worst jokes about it, about ourselves to each other. You know, like for example, not saying that I do this, or whatever, <laughs> but um, like we'll be like, yeah, hey, don't you got like, oh, we'll be like, hey, don't you love it? Like I love Tori. It's like, you know, you lay on your pillow at night and you just cry because you're alone. You know, it's awesome. <laughs> You know, which is not a good joke, but among us, we think that's so funny, and it's like it's not healthy, but it helps, it helps us get through stuff like that. So, who know? usually gets in trouble for that? I'd say, I mean, it's pretty universal. I'd say it's universal. We all make jokes like that. The Ben as a whole. Yeah. yeah, we're all pretty. We we joke about our own misery pretty, <laughs> pretty in a healthy way. I promise. Okay. Do you guys do uh, seriousness? Oh yeah, we um, we you know we we have like uh, serious moments and stuff like that. But you know, talking about it helps the dialogue, helps you get through any obstacle. So who's the best shoulder in the in the band to cry on? Oh, uh, I mean, yeah. I'd I'd say I don't know. As far as like the serious stuff, uh, we all kind of talk to each other about it in different moments or at the same time or this and that. But it's it's usually not too too insane. We, ha we haven't had a moment where it's like so bad that like everyone's like, whoa, you know, so, cross fingers. And Paradise got released? Yes. A few months ago? Yeah, yeah. And the last single is I Love You, I Love You, It's Disgusting. Yes. Who's yes. the most romantic guy in the band? Ah, it's gotta be. To gotta, the point it's disgusting. It's gotta be Ollie. Okay. He, yeah, so, yeah, when, when we were writing that song, we wanted, we wanted to write that song, uh, well he, for the, for the most part, he wanted to write that song. Uh, it's about his girlfriend, and uh, and it's like, cause like when it comes to that feeling, you know, that in love feeling, like, and you have it, and you experience it, it feels awesome to you, but to everybody else, you're like, that is so corny. Like, what the? You're like, what? Like, what? but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what everybody else thinks about the situation is irrelevant, you know, because it's you're in it with this other person, this other, you know, this other being, and you're experiencing it. Um, so I think that was a cool thing that we wanted to like 
bring into it as far as the song, you know, like it's just a ukulele and a slide guitar. You know, like if you listen to it without listening to the lyrics, you're like, oh, that's a little cheesy. I'm like, yeah, that's the whole, yeah, exactly. That's like, that's what that experience and that feeling is like. But, uh, like, I wanted to, you know, have that idea around it, but he is definitely the mastermind behind that feeling, which makes him by far the most romantic person in a cheesy as hell way, but in an amazing way. And is it the one that does uh, PDAs to the max? Um, does what? PDAs, public displays of affection. Um, no, it's not. It, uh, sometimes it depends. So maybe I'm every, gonna show every him now and again, nothing crazy. I'm gonna show it to him later. Okay. So he's gonna have to confront you now. Okay, deal. Okay, and I'm gonna take you way back to the video for Come and Go. Okay. Um, and I know that you guys are into metaphors. Oh. So is yeah. the band being beaten up by women is that a metaphor for life of you enjoying being abused by women? Uh, a little bit. That I mean to be honest, we 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 do love metaphors a lot. Uh, we we put them all over the place. That in particular was not like <laughs> no. That that was like I mean don't get me wrong. Life beats you up all over the place, and you can do everything you can to get away from it, but it will in some shape or form. And dealing with it is how you get through it in different ways, in your own way, whatever. But that was just like yeah, it'd be funny if we just skated around and people beat us up. Like that that was just all that idea was. Oh, man, I wish there would have been a deeper meaning for it. That would have been awesome. But, but that was just hilarious to us. Okay, Dorian, anything else you want to say to fans and listeners? Um, just thank you very much. Uh, like this whole this UK tour has been amazing, and we're gonna go back to the states soon. We have a lot of really awesome stuff to announce very soon. Uh, and you know, 2018 is gonna be really exciting. And thank you for listening and hanging out. Okay, Dorian, of course, right? Thank you very much.